Hey guys, uh, a little while back I actually got a job down at uh, JCAR Electronics um, which is our local electronics store here in Australia um, and I've been eyeing off this thing for quite a while um, it's actually a new new product by uh, Freetronics um, it's written on here somewhere but um, and what it is is it's a uh, LED cube and it's a uh, red, green and blue so all these LEDs have uh, red, green and blue dyes in them and basically the it's uh, Arduino compatible so you know uses all the common um, IDE and all that sort of thing um, it's based off the uh, Leonardo board so it uses the 80 mega 32U4 um, so it actually has built in uh, USB um, so basically what it is it's a 4x4 cube uh, uses I think they're actually 8 millimeters um, but they I don't know, they look like 10 millimeters to me, but I haven't actually measured, but uh, 8 millimeter frosted uh, RGB LEDs. Um, and how they've done this thing is actually rather neat. Um, when you get it, it comes in basically with these little strips of circuit board or PCB. Uh, it's not going to focus. And so each layer of LEDs, as you can see here, each layer comes with a uh, circuit board that's already joined together but it's cut like that and then these strips running up the side here up on each side actually come on a uh, separate PCB and you break them off um, and how they work is they actually poke excuse the mess on the bottom here I'll explain it in a bit but they actually poke through the bottom of the uh, circuit board and then they solder on the top side so it's actually a rather neat way of doing it um, I mean it's much better than having to solder all the legs of the LEDs together. Um, the downside to this is of course that the circuit board uh, when you're making something that size even though you've got all this area cut out in the middle um, it still costs the same price as basically a full size circuit board uh, even without all those cutouts so yeah, cost is a bit of a limiting factor in how big you can make these with circuit boards um, which is probably why they went for 4x4 um, that and there's already a what is it 64 LEDs here um, and 64 times four leads is a lot of soldering. Uh, this thing took me about two hours to put together, um, but it was actually a pretty fun kit to put together. I mean, it was it's well thought out. Um, I'm actually kind of impressed with the uh, circuit board design with it. Um, having done a few circuit board design myself, um, I can see there's been a lot of work put into this to make it you know as user friendly as possible. Um, yeah, it's a little bit pricey at around 90 bucks, but I mean, for the amount of circuit board, I mean, you got you can consider this as a, I think I measured them about 80 by 80, so that's four 80 by 80 circuit boards there, plus another one on the bottom that's probably I don't know, roughly 10 by 10 centimeters or so. Um, so you know, that's five or six separate circuit boards in this thing to make it up and circuit boards aren't particularly cheap um, I'm willing to bet that's probably what the major cost in this thing actually was um, the LEDs and stuff themselves are pretty cheap so yeah I'm willing to bet the circuit boards are actually what the cost was in this thing that and they're actually black um, solder mask as well so yeah it just adds a nice touch instead of having you know the boring green um, just you know contrasts the LEDs a bit more um, the other thing is it does have gold plated pads so that's a rather nice touch um, not really necessary but you know black and gold um, but yeah what I was saying about this circuit board is it's really well designed um, I mean the battery I've got a battery here lithium uh, polymer with a little built on driver oh, driver charging board there and I'm using that to power the cube um, of course that only outputs about, I don't know, uh, 3.6 to 4.2 volts or something, but it's fine running off that. Um, but yeah, they do break out basically everything you could ever need. Uh, they've got an XP header there for if you wanted to add wireless, or um, underneath that battery they've got breakouts so you can tap into the LED drivers. Up the top here they've got all the spare analog and I think one digital pin. Um, but yeah, they also break out. Uh, you, you can cut the uh, trace there for the power LED, so that is a little bit distracting. So you can turn it off if you need to. Um, there's also an external 
uh, 5 volt power input there um, and also an LED tester which interestingly there is a little resistor uh, can't really see it but there's meant to be a little resistor beside that that seems to be missing so it doesn't actually work I'm not sure if that's a uh, just a manufacturing fault but doesn't really worry me anyway um, yeah what I did to this thing is I've added a uh, I've got a potentiometer over here an accelerometer here on a little button here and also the power button here uh, this is a three axis uh, analog accelerometer so that's uh, running off the 3.3 volt rail and into the uh, analog 0, 1 and 2 uh, analog 3 is uh, what is that? I don't know what it is actually. Um, analog 3 is actually the battery voltage, that's what it is. So this, um, the Arduino on this is actually measuring the battery voltage so it knows to cut it off when it gets low. Because this is just a charger, it doesn't actually monitor the battery at all. So when this thing gets low I've got a little beeper down in there and it also flashes like an L symbol on the side. So yeah, just a little warning that it might be going flat. Um, yeah. So basically what I've done with this is used a, uh, I've set up a simple sketch with the accelerometer uh, so that the cube can detect what side it's sitting on. Um, the button here is just to change through modes, so I've put a few different modes on there just for fun and the pot's just to change, you know, various delays in the code. Um, but one thing I did notice with this is um, the 3.3 volt rail is actually supplied by the um, AT Mega there and it's actually used for the um, internal USB I suppose regulation um, so the thing was that even though they've got a trace here you can cut to disable USB power um, without that the chip actually doesn't recognize that it has USB so the 3.3 volt rail doesn't work so you just need to watch out for that if you are running off um, external power the 3.3 volt rail won't work um, so what I did to fix that is there's actually a used to be a little fuse here so I've removed that fuse and the uh, battery power is actually running into the um, output side well output of that fuse and then the input of the USB is running straight into this charger that's all it's doing so when the USB is plugged in it's just charging this battery and then the cube itself is running off the battery as it's charging um, so this way the power from the battery is actually going into the chip as if it was getting USB power so 3.3 volt rail works so yeah, it was a little bit of a bodge I had to do but it works um, the other thing I'm also doing is this is a 3.3 volt accelerometer um, and also because I wanted to measure the battery voltage I needed an analog reference something other than the um, the uh, system well, system voltage uh, so what I did is use the 3.3 volt regulator in the um, AT Mega there as its own analog reference, which is kind of bodgy, but it seems to work just fine. Uh, so what's, what that does is the battery there is being sent through a resistive divider, which is dividing it in half, basically, uh, so that it fits within the 3.3 volt range of the analog inputs. Um, and, well, since the accelerometer is 3.3 volt input itself, its output will never go above that. And then the switch and the pot here are just run off 3.3 volts as well so all the analog inputs on this thing run at 3.3 volts um, could have left it at 5 if I used a um, maybe a separate voltage reference or I could have used a comparator on this to actually physically shut it off when the battery goes flat yeah kind of bodged all this together late at night and that's why it's all just taped down for the moment um, so I'll show you this thing turned on so on the side here, just have a simple switch I pulled out of something. And the first mode it goes into is the, uh, well, the color selection mode. So basically what this does is just takes the input from the potentiometer and varies the color. So that's kind of just a cool mode I added just for fun, I guess. Um, so when you press the button, it goes into the next mode. And this is the accelerometer mode. So as you can see there's a blue layer of LEDs at the bottom and that's detecting which side the cube's sitting on. So if I turn this on its side, you can see that it changes to that side. Turn it upside down, goes to the top. 
So that's just kind of a uh, concept thing. I'm going to, uh, I plan to do something else with this, um, but it's just kind of a idea of detecting the cube's orientation. It is a little bit buggy because it relies on the fact that the accelerometer, um, when it's sitting up straight like this, uh, the Z value is actually the lowest out of X and Y uh, because of gravity's basically offsetting it in a negative direction. When you turn it upside down, this direction down is actually the highest value out of all of them. So what you have to do is actually basically detect if it's upside down or not. If it's not upside down, you set the LEDs on the layer, layer with the lowest value on, but if it is upside down, you have to actually find the highest value and set that layer on. Um, so when you actually, I think you can sort of just see it there, they're flickering a bit, but that's because when you tilt it on its side or on its top, it's using a set value of around, I think, 300. So if the accelerometer value is uh, on all of the axes are over 300, it means that it's upside down. So then what it has to do is actually find the side with the highest value, and that's the one it'll be sitting on because of uh, gravity. Um, so yeah, that's a cool little mode that I'll do something else with. Um, the next one is basically the... Um, it's the rain example that actually comes with the cube, um, except I've modified it so that basically each LED just comes as a different colour. Uh, it's probably not really that easy to see on this camera. They sort of appear the same colour. Yeah, in this one the potentiometer just controls the speed basically. Uh, if you press the button again, uh, this is the random colour example that also comes with it. Um, so yeah, once again, potentiometer just controls the um, well, the rate of change, I guess. Uh, if you press the button again, this is actually a mode I just made myself then. Um, what it basically does is it's trying to use uh, fading on the LEDs. Um, so basically it is generating a random colour, but unlike the last one, it's not applying a random colour to each LED. Each LED is colour is sort of related to the last ones. Um, so yeah, it looks like the whole cube's just changing colour at once, but each LED is actually just fading between the colours uh, about four at a time. And this is completely random, so it's not really any in any sort of cycle or anything. Uh, and yeah, that's basically it. The next mode is the um, get it to change. The button setup on this is not ideal because it actually it's not going into an interrupt or anything, so you actually have to get it when the cube's not stuck in a delay. So yeah, I thought I'd just show what I've done with this thing. It is uh, quite a fun little project if you can afford it. I mean, like I said, it's a little bit spendy, but when you consider the amount of cost and stuff that went into the circuit boards and all that of this, it's you know pretty reasonable for what it is, I reckon. And it saves you a hell of a lot of work um, instead of having to solder all the leads together. But yeah, um, yeah that's basically what it is. All I did was just add a couple of sensors and stick a battery on to make it portable. <coughs> and like I said, this actually runs at it's designed to run at 5 volts, but the um, 80 mega there will run, I think it will run even below 2 volts even. Um, the downside is you're not meant to actually clock them at a higher speed on lower voltage, so they're rated for, I think it's 20 megahertz at 5 volts. So stock they run at 16, all the Arduinos do, I think most of them anyway. Uh, so running at 3.6 volts, which is the lowest the battery will probably get before cutting off, um, you're probably overclocking it by maybe 5 or 10 percent, but realistically it doesn't really matter. It's not going to blow up or anything, so, yeah, just thought I'd show that. Just something I've been working on, and um, I'm hoping to do something a bit cooler with the um, accelerometer. Oops. Yeah, that's the problem with the button is it updates too quickly. Yeah, thanks for watching.